All right, in today's video, I'm going to answer your questions about my time and my experiences in Nepal. So let's start right away. And this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. How much money did you spend on average per day? And I can tell you the exact number because I always uh, write down every single dollar I spend every day so that at the end of each month I know exactly how much money I spend on hotels, on food, on traveling costs. So on average I spend 70 US dollar per day in Nepal. But uh, yeah, you can definitely travel cheaper than that in Nepal. Uh, the majority of these $60 per day were actually for my hotels. The actual traveling cost in Nepal and also the the food cost is actually very, relatively low, I would say, compared to uh, other travel destinations I've been to. So the majority of these $60 were on hotels. But uh, yeah, you can definitely travel Nepal on a budget, but of course you can also spend way more money than that. And then, why did you want to go to Nepal? And actually, I have to say the decision to go to Nepal was a very, very spontaneous one. I was in uh, Bali for a friend's birthday, so I took a week off. I've spent a week in Bali, Indonesia. And during this week, I was like, okay, by the end of this week, I want to go to a new country. Uh, some somewhere where I've never been to before at the beginning of each year usually I make a list okay these countries are possible to visit these countries are interesting these countries are yeah places that I would like to see so then I, I had a look on my list while I was in uh, Bali and then I thought okay Nepal I've never been to uh, Nepal before I've only been to South Asia once before that was in Sri Lanka last year and then uh, yeah I thought Nepal uh, can be interesting. It's known for its beautiful mountain sceneries. I've heard that the people there are very friendly and welcoming. I will talk about that more in detail, I think, in a later question. But uh, yeah, it was then a very spontaneous decision. Hey, Nepal sounds interesting. Why not go to Nepal? And then I literally booked the flight, I think, three days before I actually took the flight then. So very spontaneous decision, but uh, that's how I like to travel. Usually most of my trips are very spontaneous. And then, have you ever been disrespectful off camera or somewhere else? Every smile have a dark side. We all Nepalese love your smile, so did you ever been disrespectful? First of all, I'm not sure if I would agree with this mindset. Every smile have a dark side. I think that's a very negative mindset to have. So I, I wouldn't really agree with having this mindset. But to answer the question, have you ever been disrespectful off camera? And no, I can 100% say I am the same person off camera as I am on camera. I think everyone that knows me in real life, everyone that met me before, that have met me before, can uh, confirm that I always try to be very respectful and polite to every person I meet, no matter who it is, if it's uh, the staff working in my hotel, people I meet at the queues in the airport, the staff working somewhere, or if it's people on the streets that are trying to sell me something or people that are begging for money. I always try to be very polite and respectful with every person I meet. So uh, yeah, I am very sure that I am the same person off camera as I am on camera. And then bad sides of Nepal. And actually I got questions relating to, uh, to this a lot. So there's one thing that I can mention, which I think Nepal can improve. I would love to see Nepal improving that uh, because I think it's something that you can improve and it's sad to see. And that is uh, the pollution, uh, especially when I was in Kathmandu, I realized that a lot, there's a lot of trash and garbage in a lot of places. For example, there are some rivers through the city and these rivers are always covered with trash and that wasn't nice to see and uh, you see children playing in the trash yeah that is something that wasn't really nice to see and i would say that was the the worst thing i came across in nepal all the pollution all the garbage and i remember even when i was hiking in the mountains i think there was one scene in my hiking video in naga Kot where you just see the whole ground was covered with empty glass and plastic bottles and that was literally in the middle of a mountain so I was like, why is there so much trash lying around here? Why are people throwing that here? And you see that a lot when you're walking through Kathmandu, uh, or also I saw that in Dulikel, for example, people just throwing their trash on the streets. So I try to understand why, okay, why is there so much trash lying around here and why is nobody picking it up? If you are from Nepal, maybe you can try to explain it in the comment section. I would love to know about that. My guess would be that uh, the government doesn't really care about offering proper trash collecting services. Is that how you call it in English? So like trucks 
driving around the city collecting the trash. Maybe there's not a proper system for that in Nepal. But still, even if there is not a proper system for that, it's not really necessary to just throw your trash on the streets, right? So that's something that I didn't really understand. And that's that was sad to see. And I think without all the trash, especially in the cities and even in the, in the mountains, uh, Nepal would improve a lot. So that is something that I would love to see uh, in Nepal to change in the future. And then positive and negative things of Nepal. Is it worth to visit Nepal and what can be done to improve the tourism of Nepal? Yeah, I think what I just mentioned, uh, the topic of all the pollution and the trash, that is definitely the negative side and something that Nepal can improve. But uh, yeah, let's stop talking about the negative things. Let me tell you about the positive things about Nepal. Uh, first of all, I can really say what stood out for me was uh, the kindness and the friendliness of the people there. Everywhere where I have been to in Nepal, the people have been very welcoming, very friendly. They have a positive attitude. That was my impression. And from a tourist perspective, what's also really nice is that everyone speaks good English. It's very easy to get around the country, even as a foreigner who doesn't speak the local language. Uh, I think I can't really remember many situations where I was stuck or lost in translation because someone I spoke to didn't speak English. So the, the English level is very nice. The people are very kind and welcoming. And I think Nepal is an incredible, beautiful country. I mean, that's what Nepal is famous for, the mountains, for hiking. So there's a lot of things that you can see in Nepal that you probably cannot see in many places around the world. And then why didn't you go to Pokhara? And actually the amount of comments I got throughout my whole Nepal series about Pokhara is amazing. Uh, I think under every video there's at least two or three comments. Hey, when are you coming to Pokhara? Why are you not coming to Pokhara? So it really made me think, wow, I think I missed something in Pokhara. So the reason I didn't go to Pokhara is, um, so I like to travel slow. I'm not rushing through the countries and I had four weeks of visa in Nepal. So I always like to spend at least a week or a week and a half in the, in the capital when I'm visiting a new country because I think the capital is like, yeah, a place where you can get to know the country, get your first impressions and uh, feel the vibes. So I, I spent over a week in Kathmandu at the beginning and then I was like, okay, I want to go to the mountains. So Nagakot is nearby. And on the way to Nagakot, I, I stopped in Bhaktapur, where I spent, I think, in the end, four days. Uh, I think uh, in the video that I made about it, it looks like I only spent one night there. But uh, actually, I think I spent four full days in Bhaktapur. Um, and then I went to Nagakot. I spent over one week in Nagakot as well. Um, and then I went to Dulikel, where I also spent, I think, almost a week. And then I went back to, uh, to Kathmandu. So there wasn't really time to uh, visit Pokhara as well. Pokhara is in the other direction. Uh, you need to take a bus ride there. Or I think there are also flights going there. But uh, yeah, totally the other direction. And I don't like to rush through the places. I'm actually also trying to enjoy the places. I want to take my time. I mean, I'm not in a rush. I don't have to be home in a few weeks, so I can take my time. The only limit I had in Nepal was the visa. And of course, I also have to work while I'm traveling. I mean, editing all these videos, there's a lot of behind the scenes work all the times. So that also forces me to travel slower. Pokhara is now definitely on my list for my next visit to Nepal because I got so many comments about it. And yeah, I also actually had a lot of free time during my visit in Nepal and I am someone I like to be productive. It's very rare that I'm just sitting by the pool or watching Netflix all day. I like to be productive and something that I have been working on over the past weeks was building a new website for my media kit and if you are also in need of a professional new website I can recommend Squarespace to you. With Squarespace it's very simple and easy to set up your own website literally within a few hours even if you are like me and you have absolutely no idea about coding or building websites from the scratch, I was able to set up my website within one afternoon. Squarespace offers very easy and user-friendly drag and drop menus. You can of course include your own pictures or videos. There are plenty of professionally designed templates that you can choose from. So you can make the website look the way you like to. You can link your social media profiles and if you want to, you can even monetize the website, for example, with membership areas. So it's very simple and easy to set up your own website and if you want to try it out as well you can go to squarespace.com to start a free trial and when you're ready to launch your website go to squarespace.com to save 10% of your first purchase of a domain or website. 
Have you traveled to remote or village areas during your visit in Nepal? Share your experience of village life of hill regions of the country. When I was in Nagakot and also in Dulikel, I was hiking a little bit and during the hikes I came across some villages. Uh, you could see that once in a video, the hiking video I did in, in Nagakot, where I ended up in this uh, little village in the mountains where this old lady invited me to uh, to come to her house. Yeah, that was my only real experience in a small remote village in Nepal. And yeah, as you could see the, in the video, um, she was very welcoming, very hospitable, invited me to her home. She offered me milk. She even offered me food. Uh, and then she made me the present with the gift and then also the other people in the village that I met. Uh, that was very, very uh, interesting to see. Also, seeing a remote village like this is something that is totally interesting for me to see because this is so different from from the life that I am used to or how the life looks like in Germany. Villages in Germany look very, very different compared to villages in Nepal or in, in Asia in general. So that is always something that is very interesting for me to see. And I think what would be interesting for me, maybe also like a little challenge for me, leaving my comfort zone in the future is to maybe stay in these villages for a few days. Maybe I can find a village which uh, which has some homestays, maybe something where you can experience village life for a few days. I think that would be interesting and maybe something I can do on my next visit to Nepal. And then a question that was also asked a lot. What was your favorite food in Nepal? And I think this is probably going to be a very stereotype answer. Probably most foreigners who are visiting in Nepal are saying this answer, but I have to go with momos. Momos were incredible. I ate them a lot all over the places. Chicken momo, buffalo momo, always very, very delicious. Um, but I also really like dal bat. And if I can name a drink, lassi was amazing. So I think these were my three favorite foods slash drinks. Lassi, dal bat and momos. If you're going to Nepal, definitely try momos. That's my number one recommendation. They were amazing. And then let's go over to some questions from Instagram. Um, do you think the people are friendly compared to the Philippines? I don't really want to compare to other countries now, um, but yeah, the people in the Philippines have been incredibly friendly towards me and so have been the people in Nepal. Like I said earlier in this video, um, the people uh, I met, the people I came across in Nepal have always been very, very welcoming, very friendly, hospitable, always smiling. So uh, my overall impression of the people in Nepal is, uh, is a very good impression. And then what was the best moment in Nepal? Mm, I think I have to go with seeing the Himalayas for the first time. Uh, I showed that moment in the video of the mountain hotel I stayed in. And yeah, I spent uh, almost a week already by that time in Nagakot. I was hoping to see the Himalayas in Nagakot, but the weather quality was so bad during the whole week. It was always foggy and raining, so I couldn't see the, the Himalayas throughout the whole week until this afternoon when I stayed in this mountain hotel. And I remember I came back to my room, I sat down on the balcony and then suddenly, oh, what's this? There's a whole mountain range. And they look majestic, so gigantic. Wow, that was a really, really cool moment. And yeah, I think definitely my favorite moment in Nepal. And funny thing is, that was the only time I could see the Himalayas in Nagakot. So that was like a two hour window on one afternoon. And then I went to Dulikel and there was one afternoon as well where I could see the Himalaya range. So I also, in Dulike, I had a hotel with a balcony with mountain view. Mountain view in theory. It was always dusty and foggy and I couldn't see the Himalayas except for one afternoon. So in total, I saw the Himalaya range two times during my one month stay in, in uh, Nepal. But yeah, that was, that was a great moment, seeing the Himalaya ranges. Wow, I will never forget that and definitely my favorite moment in Nepal. And then, would you go trekking next time? A question from Shevin Dev. Shout out to uh, Shevin Dev. They have a great series on their channel about uh, trekking, to, uh, trekking in Nepal, trekking uh, to the uh, Everest base camp. Going on a proper trek in Nepal is definitely something that would be interesting. It would be a challenge for myself, definitely. Uh, in case you don't know, if you go uh, if you go on the trek to the Himalaya base camp, for example, I think it takes like a week or even like 10 days to go there and return. 
So it's like challenging yourself every day. Tracking in these high elevations definitely isn't easy. So that would definitely be an interesting challenge for me, but I think I would be keen to do it. But uh, I think I need preparation for that. You can't just show up in Nepal and then the next day decide, oh, let's go uh, proper hiking for a week in, in the mountains. So I think I need some preparation for that, but uh, that would definitely be interesting. So maybe something I will put on my list for my next visit in Nepal. How does it compare to India and Sri Lanka? Um, so I can't compare to India because I've never been to India, but I have been to Sri Lanka last year. And my impressions are that Nepal is actually very similar to Sri Lanka. I remember like on when I first ate Uh, local food in Nepal, I was immediately reminded of the food in Sri Lanka. So I think the cuisine is similar, like the spices they use, the type of food they eat, really reminded me a lot about uh, Sri Lanka. And also when I was in the mountains, the scenery reminded me of central Sri Lanka. So I would even say that some scenery is the same. Of course, there's no no Himalayas, no super high mountains in Sri Lanka. But overall, the, the mountain areas really reminded me of central Sri Lanka. And I also say even the people are similar, and not only their appearance, but also the way they they behave, the way they they speak or they treated me. Um, very similar, I would say. How do you stay so patient when sellers keep persistently selling you things you don't want? Also very interesting question. How do I deal with uh, annoying street vendors or people that are begging for money? Yeah, I always like to be respectful and polite to the people that I meet because I always um, like to think from their perspective. People that are trying to sell you something on the streets, they do this to, to earn money, to make a living, maybe to, to buy food for their children. So there's always a reason why people is doing or why people are doing what they are doing. And especially if you see these street vendors, I don't think they are making a lot of money unless they are really like scamming tourists. They are in front of a very touristy place and they're overcharging tourists and they're doing this 20 times every day. These people um, yeah, maybe don't have only good intentions, but I don't like to assume the bad things when I come across somebody. Like when I'm meeting someone for the first time and I know nothing about this person, why assume something bad? So I always think like, okay, maybe this is just a father who's trying to to make some money to uh, have food for, for the children on the next day. So I always uh, stay polite, respectful. They are just there to, uh, to earn money, to make a living. And then, is it safe to travel in Nepal? And uh, from my perspective, I would say yes. Uh, I never felt unsafe in Nepal. Like even in the, in the evenings, uh, there was not a situation where I felt unsafe. Um, but also I've never been out during the night in Nepal. I think the latest I was out was like 8 or 9 p.m. <laughs> and uh, when I was in the Tamil area, which is the, the main touristy area in Kathmandu, there were some sketchy persons in the evenings. I remember I was, for example, I was walking around Tamil and a lot of times people came to me and asked if I want to buy weed or drugs. But overall, I didn't really felt unsafe. So I would say it is safe, but of course, be cautious as usual when you travel, like uh, don't walk around lonely streets in the night at l alone, something like that. But overall, I felt very safe in Nepal. And then, did you have any difficulty in language while you were in Nepal? And I think I talked about this earlier in the video as well. Um, one of the best things about Nepal was that everyone spoke English. Or I would say like 90% of people I came across spoke English and many of them even very good, especially uh, the younger people like kids or like people in their 20s, maybe 30s as well, they spoke really, really good English. So the language has never been a problem. There have, has never been a situation where I felt, okay, there's a major language barrier here. So that was something that was really, really good in Nepal. Language barriers almost didn't exist. And then, will you visit Nepal again? And yes, I am actually quite keen to uh, return to Nepal one day, probably not again this year, But uh, I think it will be on my list next year. As I said, Pokhara would be nice to visit. So many people recommended me to go there. And then also maybe challenging myself and going on a proper hiking trip for like a week or so. Maybe the Everest Base Camp. So uh, yeah, definitely Nepal is on my list again in the future. And yeah, a lot of questions I got were regarding the food poisoning I had in Nepal. If you are following me on Instagram, you probably know that I had horrible food poisoning in Nepal. And 
yeah, a lot of questions were regarding that. And I decided I want to make a whole separated video talking about the experiences regarding the food poisoning because it actually affected my whole channel. A lot of plans have changed because of the food poisoning. I had to cancel an already planned trip. I lost a lot of money because of that. And yeah, I will make a video talking about that and um, yeah, also let you know my new travel plan. So it will be like a channel update video where I will uh, yeah, inform you about the upcoming plans for the next weeks and months here on the channel. So that is going to be the next episode. And if you are curious to see my very first video in Nepal, my arrival, then check out the video right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao, guys.